negative self-esteem cycle. Caring parents often believe that if their children have the first precursor to self-esteem, a positive living environment, they will automatically perform up to their potential, and often this turns out to be true. But simply focusing on affirming your child may not be enough to start and maintain the positive self-esteem cycle. Kids also need direction and a structure to learn basic life skills for developing their competence. As they develop these critical life skills, they achieve success, work toward their potential and create a strong self-esteem. Eventually, kids can grow and learn to maintain a healthy self-esteem cycle independently. Ben, ben is an exceptionally bright adolescent who went through elementary school with ease and a success. He was easygoing and got along well with everyone. His teachers liked him and he did passably well in his studies. He caught on very easily and did his work with little effort. However, his teachers report that Ben's work was sloppy and he didn't always finish it on time. They reassured Ben's parents that he was learning the material and they weren't terribly concerned. Ben's parents often felt frustrated that he wouldn't sit down and do his work when they asked him to. He preferred to play games on the computer and they had a hard time pulling him away from that. When they did, he would read recreationally or play in his room, but he wouldn't get going on his work. When his parents forced him to do homework, Ben resisted, saying it was easy and stupid. They usually succeed in getting him to do his work, but rarely to a level that represented his true potential. The result was a chronic control battle where Ben's parents were always trying to get him to apply himself, while Ben rather successfully resisted their efforts. Ben's parents figured that Ben was doing okay in school because the teachers liked him and his grades were fine. He liked to read and he showed interest and the skill with computers. Even though they would have liked Ben to demonstrate more care in his work, they decided it was probably silly to fight over neatness or timeliness. In fact, because Ben's parents wanted Ben to grow up with high self-esteem, they didn't want to overemphasize the negatives and the fight over these issues. They decided to back off so that they wouldn't injure Ben's self-esteem. By the time Ben reached his freshman, freshman year in high school, he was no longer doing so well. He had developed the habit of staying up late and playing computer games. His and his friends only interest and passion. By now, a control battle with his parents was in full swing. Ben's parents constantly struggled with him to manage his schoolwork and to do anything active, such as playing a sport or mountain biking. He was exper experimenting with marijuana and claimed it enhanced his ability to do his writing assignments. Ben's teachers continued to, to like him, but generally reported that he didn't apply himself. At the end of any, every grading period, his parents would threaten and fight with him to do his work and catch up. Ben usually had at least one class that he was interested in and he would get an A in that class, but in his other classes he would go along with little effort and get C's and sometimes even a D or F. If we were to ask him, Ben, ben would tell us that he had great self-esteem. He would say it was the adults who had a problem, not him. In truth, Ben had become cynical, no longer valuating, valuing himself or those around him. At this point, left to his own devices, Ben was at risk for becoming more seriously involved with drugs and dropping out of school. These are certainly not self-valuing behaviors and do not signal healthy self-esteem. So what went wrong? Ben's parents loved and cared for him. They acknowledged and supported his areas of strength. They bought him a computer and they allowed him to be himself. Yet Ben got caught in a negative self-esteem esteem cycle. He was not developing his potential and his behavior became self-destructive and oppositional. 
It was obvious to everyone that Ben had terrific potential, but he was not held accountable or properly supported to develop that potential. Because he was so bright, the problems were easily overlooked, at least initially. Like all kids, he needed to learn to do his best, regardless of what that quote-unquote best was. Ben was failing to develop his potential because his parents and the teachers did not maintain high enough standards for him. He received the love and the support he needed, but not the structure and the challenge needed to develop his ability. Consequently, Ben never developed real self-esteem. Eventually, the control battle further eroded Ben's self-esteem and left his parents feeling helpless to parent him effectively. By the standard, there are many reasons to insist upon high standard for our kids. Holding high standard helps them see how well they can do. They learn to persevere through the difficult part of learning and become out victorious on the other side. It teaches them that they can dig deeply into themselves and accomplish something that they might not have believed they could, so they learn to believe in themselves. Often when I see a teen with low self-esteem and no areas of achievement to feel good about, his parents will say, I don't know what happened, he just never stuck with anything. Struggling to learn the piano can be difficult, very difficult, but after working on it each day for only 30 minutes or so, what used to be difficult will eventually become easy, and we will be ready to face a new, more difficult phase of learning while enjoying our gradually acquired musical skills. The same can be said for learning a sport or any physical activity, as well as gaining proficiency in art, foreign languages, mathematics, social and emotional skills, and any other area of knowledge or skill we can imagine. Whether or not we are naturally gifted at something, by setting goals and working at it with appropriate direction and support, over time we will achieve success. Once our kids learn that they can begin something with relatively low skill and knowledge, and by persevering eventually achieve success, they will have a critical skill for life that will bring them confidence and a stronger self-esteem. Young people who are confident in their ability to achieve are far less likely to enter into crucial battles with their parents because when they are asked to do their work, regardless of what it is, they have learned that work pays off and they resist it less. When are standards high enough? An appropriate, an appropriately high standard is the expectation that your teenager will put in a solid effort with a positive attitude. Putting in the time is important, yet if she's doing so with a careless, the sucks attitude, with little regard for the quality, that's not meeting a high standard. A general rule of thumb for setting an appropriately high standard for schoolwork could be one grade above what your teen could easily get. If she can get C's with a little effort, an appropriately high standard could be B's. If she can get B's easily, she should go for A's. And if she can easily get A's, she should push further in some other way. Perhaps a self-directed project in one of her classes, a job or extra class at the local college. It's best if kids involve themselves in an organized activity beyond the schoolwork and once again put in the time with a good attitude. The extracurricular activity can be a club, organization, or team in or out of school, a job, or a family responsibility such as helping the family business or providing child care to siblings. Once kids join something under most conditions, they should be required to stay with it and give it their best. The old saying, a job worth doing is a job worth doing well, is a great value to teach. That way, regardless of what they're doing, they'll end up feeling good about it and about themselves. When are standards too rigid or too high? The control battle can occur not only when standards are set too low, but also when they're too specific, rigid, or high. Remember, we establish high standards to help our kids discover their potential and to feel good enough about themselves to persevere through difficulties. 
if we stress our kids out by requiring all A's so they can get into a specific top college, we will only undermine their self-esteem. Instead of learning to enjoy challenges, they will get the, mes the message that it isn't about the challenge, it's about winning, getting the top grade, getting into the best school, getting ahead of the other guy. In other words, it isn't about who they are, it's, an, it's about an ex external definition of success. When are standards too rigid or too high? When they are no longer about making the effort, learning and growing, but instead are all about a specific outcome. For instance, a 4.5 GPA or winning some specific award or honor. Standards are too high when extreme amounts of time are required a day in and a day out to succeed. Standards are too high when the struggle to meet them takes away from a balanced lifestyle. So what is the skill set for happiness? 
Before we discuss the skills, let's reaffirm the notion that you can't make your child happy. When you try, you were being quote-unquote other person focused, and we know where that leads. However, you can love your children, enjoy them, demonstrate faith in them, coach them, and set limits with them. You can empower your kids to make themselves happy even though at any given moment they may, they may not choose to do so. And do not forget the one person you can make happy, you. By doing the things necessary for you to be happy, you'll have lots of energy left over for parenting. And you'll be setting a great example for your teenagers.